What do este, ese, and aquel mean? And how to use them with the noun and how without? Hello and welcome to another Spanish lesson with me, Eva. Today we will talk about este, ese, and aquel. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Don't forget to click the bell button. And if you are enjoying my lessons, don't forget to like the videos. Okay, so three words. Este, ese, and aquel. I'll write them here. Okay, este means this, okay? It means I'm talking about something that is near me, okay? So we can say near the speaker, okay? Anything that's near me, I will refer to it as este, okay? For anything that's near you, but not near me, I will use ese, okay? So ese is far from the speaker, but it's near the listener, okay? So I will say far from the speaker, but near the listener, okay? And aquel is anything that's far from both, okay? So it's neither near me, neither near you, it's far from both, okay? So far from both, okay? In English, este would be this, and both of these being far from me would be those, okay, or that in singular, those is already plural, okay? So, for example, I don't know, um, este libro, because it's near me, the speaker. If this book, um, uh, if you're holding, if you were holding this book and I were here and the book were there where you are, I would refer to it as ese libro. But if I put this book here and I stand here and now it's neither near me nor near you, it's far from both of us, I then say aquel libro, okay? So one more time. You always have to think of it from the point of view of the speaker, okay? The person speaking needs to know este libro ese libro and aquel libro, okay? Good. So now you know the meaning. Let's see how these three words behave when we use them to point to people, objects, things, whatever, okay? Again, we will be pointing to nouns. And you already know that nouns in Spanish have not only singular and plural, so we are not only changing the number of the noun, there is also the gender, okay? Now, if a noun is masculine, este, ese, and aquel, uh, aquel will have one form, one ending, but for feminine nouns, the ending will have to change, okay? So let's see some examples of a masculine noun in singular and plural and a feminine noun in singular and plural. And let's see how este, ese, and aquel change, okay? So a masculine noun uh, in singular, libro, and in plural, libros. So one book and books. And for a feminine noun, we will have a film, película, in singular, 
and películas in plural, okay? So again, nouns in Spanish have gender and number. And we've got masculine gender here, feminine gender here. Singular and plural for masculine, singular and plural for feminine. So always for, when possible, four different endings for words that refer, that describe these nouns. We've seen it with the article already. We had el libro, los libros, la película, las películas. Same with the indefinite article. Un libro, unos libros. Una película, unas películas. So instead of just having two articles like you do in English, a uh, or sometimes un, but it's the same one really, un and the, in Spanish they have four for each. Four for the definite article and four for the indefinite article, okay? So the same thing happens with other words that describe nouns, okay? If possible, when possible, the endings will change depending on the number of the noun, singular or plural, or the gender of the noun, masculine or feminine, okay? Good. Let's start with este, okay? So for libro, we will have uh, este libro for plural, estos libros for película, esta película and for películas or películas, <laughs> estas películas. Again, in English it would be only this, this book and these books this film and these films, in Spanish we have four, not two, but four. Este, estos, esta, estas, okay? Same happens with ese, okay? So we say ese libro, esos libros, esa película, esas películas, okay? And aquel, same thing. Aquel libro. Aquellos libros. Double L here and the masculine plural ending os. Aquellos. And aquella película. And in plural, aquellas películas. Okay? Good. Two things can happen with these uh, three words, okay? Most of the time you will have them in front of the noun, okay? So you might have a sentence, I don't know, este libro es mejor que ese. Okay? So most of the time these three words will be in front of the noun. Este libro. Sometimes you might find them behind the noun, in which case you need to add an article as well. So you would say uh, el libro este es mejor que uh, ese, okay? So I've only changed the position of este and instead of having it in front of the noun, now we have it behind the noun and we need to add the article, okay? The meaning doesn't change unless you, um, you, you sort of accompany this el libro este and then you add a bit of emotion, feeling to it. 
you're either, I don't know, fed up with the book, uh, if we're talking about a book, or, or something happened uh, that really got you, <laughs> you know, um, changed your mood or, or something. No? This, this book, something wasn't quite right with it. No? it. It had an effect on you, let's put it this way. When you say, el libro este, o ese, o aquel, it doesn't matter whether it's one or the other, but if you put it behind the noun uh, with the article and, and say, el libro ese, o el niño ese, this kid um, has me on the edge, <laughs> no? you are, you are saying that this, whatever, a book, a kid or something, a song maybe that you keep hearing on the radio and it drives you crazy. Ay, la canción es, la canción es, I can't, I can't listen to it anymore, uh, no? <laughs> There's been a, an overdose <laughs> of it. Um, again, when you put the, the, these words behind the noun uh, and you sometimes want to say that it, that noun is, is really making you uh, something angry or, or anxious or nervous or something, no? Not something positive, <laughs> okay? It's usually something negative. Okay, so as I said, two things can happen. We can change the, the place of these words and instead of having them before the noun, which is the usual, sort of the standard place to, to have them, we can put them after the noun. And, as you've seen here, we don't have a noun at all. They are on their own, okay? So what happened? We got rid of the noun. We don't repeat libro anymore because we know we're talking about books, okay? So there's no need to repeat again. And we leave these words on their own, but something does happen in writing. Because we got rid of the noun, we replace it with tilde, okay? Even though in theory it doesn't need tilde because there's nothing wrong with where we place the accent, the accent is or the stress is where it should be on this syllable, but only because we got rid of libro, we now have to put this tilde. And the same would happen with ese. Uh, oh, sorry, if we were to use este, or even if we wanted to use aquel. It really doesn't matter which one of these three we use on their own. When we use them on their own, they will have to have the tilde in writing. When you speak, you don't have to worry about it, okay? Basically, what happened here, grammatically speaking, when these three words are used with the noun, either in front of it or after it, it doesn't matter, but when they're used with a noun, they are adjectives. And when they get rid of the noun and stand on their own, they are then pronouns. And that's what the word pronoun stands for. They stay, stand here in place of a noun, pronoun. They are here on the noun's behalf, so to speak, okay? So with the noun, we call we refer to these three as adjectives, but when the noun is gone, then they are pronouns, okay? Good, but you don't need to worry about it. Just know that you can um, have them either in front or after the noun and even on their own, okay? Good, so este libro es mejor que ese simply means this book is better than that one. In English, you would say that one. Or the, this book, again, is better than, than that one. Okay, <laughs> I haven't really changed uh, the meaning, at least not in English, even though uh, aquel, simply because ese and aquel have the same translation in, in English. You don't distinguish between ese and aquel. They are both translated with that, okay? So this book, that book, and that book, okay? Because both this one and this one are far from me, far from the speaker, okay? Good. Now, there is one more thing here, which is uh, a bit interesting. 
So far, we've only talked about the masculine and the feminine gender, okay? And it is true that nouns either have a masculine one or a feminine one. That doesn't change. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's, that's still <laughs> true. However, when we use these three as pronouns, okay? So when we get rid of the noun, suddenly another option appears, okay? With the noun, we're limited to the two genders, masculine and feminine. But once we get rid of the noun, there is one more option. We could even say one more gender, the neutral gender, okay? And I will give you the, um, the, uh, the forms Okay, so one more time, the forms of these three words when used as pronouns, which means when they stand alone, when there is no noun in sight, they need to come with tilde, okay? So you would have este and estos for masculine and esta and estas for feminine, okay? Same here. Ese, esos for masculine and esa, esas for feminine. Aquel, aquellos masculine and Aquella, aquellas for feminine, okay? But, as I said earlier, when they are without the noun, when they are used as pronouns, there is also what we might call the neutral gender, okay? If we are talking about books, we will say este, we know we are talking about books, but we just say, oh, this one, this one is really good, okay? And from the context, we know we are talking about books. And because a book is masculine, we have to use este, the masculine one, or um, ese, or aquel, okay? But when we just talk about the thing, okay? This thing is so good, okay? And we, we don't say this what this thing really is. No, we say, oh God, this is so good. You have to come and see it. So this thing is then neutral, okay? We haven't really named it. And because we haven't named it, we don't know if this noun is masculine or feminine, then we just think of it as neutral, okay? In which case we say esto, Eso, oops, a, que yo, okay? Again, esto, eso, and aquello simply mean, oh, this thing or, or that thing. Oh, yeah, I remember. That was so good, okay? Esto, eso, and aquello. That thing, okay? Whatever that thing is. The speaker knows what they're talking about, even though he or she hasn't really named it yet. The moment the speaker uses, names it and says what he or she is talking about, the moment he says, oh man, yeah, that film, film is feminine and we are again here. Or, oh, that book, book is masculine and we are again here. But as long as it's just a thing, it's, neutral gender, and in this case we say esto, eso, aquello. No, you might say this is very important. Esto es muy importante. Esto es 
muy importante. Now listen to me very carefully. This is very important. Mm? Escúchame, escúchame bien. Esto es muy importante. Okay, and at this point, we don't know what this esto refers to. Okay, this thing that I'm going to say now is very important. Okay, so because it, we don't know what it is, we haven't named it yet, we haven't given it a name, and we don't know if that name, once it comes up, is going to be masculine or, gen uh, or feminine, we use the neutral form. Esto, eso, and aquello. Okay? Because esto, eso, and aquello are not replacing any noun, as, as, as I just said, we don't know what noun we are talking about, what thing we are talking about. They haven't replaced any noun, they haven't sort of kicked the noun out of the way. We don't need to put the tilde on these three, okay? Because they don't stand in place of a, of a, of a noun. Um, at least not in speaking yet, we haven't really given it name. In, in the speaker's head, he or she, they know what they are talking about, uh, but for the moment it's just a thing. This thing or this is very important, so listen to me carefully. Okay? Good. Okay, that's all about este, ese, en aquel. Remember, you can use them as adjectives, which means they will always come with a noun and be either in front of it or sometimes even behind it. But sometimes they get rid of the noun, they kick it out and uh, stand in its place, uh, sort of uh, work on its behalf. And in that case, they are pronouns, these here, uh, but always in writing with the tilde. And when they are pronouns and we haven't defined the thing that we are talking about, it's just a thing, we then use esto, eso and aquello, okay? So we've kind of added another gender here, but only in this case, okay? Good. That's all for today. Have a great day and I'll see you again in the next lesson. Bye-bye.